the first trend that I see is is the usage of cloud uh, being used as a platform for innovation, a platform for trying out new technologies and uh, trying to figure out if something will work for my project or not uh, and move on to the next one. So over here, the fact that cloud gives you uh, compute, unlimited compute, so to say, uh, storage, networking, at a fraction of a cost of which you will set up a data center has become a very important point because it enables you to quickly set up whatever development technology you want to use, get it working, and then you know throw it all away because it probably does not fit your project and start with another one. From that particular perspective, the second trend that I see is this focus on cloud native application development. So let's delve a little more on this. What I mean by cloud native application development is tools and techniques focused on developing for cloud. And that is very different than the way you would have been developing on-prem, on your premises. On-prem, you can uh, you can actually assume a lot of things that are in your control. On cloud, not so. On cloud also, the way of communication between applications, between components, between services could be different. And therefore, the focus has been to get onto what is called as cloud native application development. Uh, over here, there's a lot of work that has been done by uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF, and uh, as Oracle, we are an active contributor to the foundation. Um, but you should check up the work that is being done in cloud events, um, in breaking groundbreaking technologies like Kubernetes, uh, Istio, etc. These are fundamental technologies that enable you to create the next generation of applications that are built for cloud, that are built on cloud. We talk about cloud native application development, a very important part of that is also the whole concept of DevOps, of how you make it fast, how, how do you make it agile, how do you make it automated to get from code into production or into deployment. For this, there are a number of um, techniques, number of applications, uh, number of new ways of doing things have been uh, worked upon and, and it's a very important part uh, in your thinking of application development to make DevOps a core part of the overall uh, development life cycle. Because we, we've moved away from um, the waterfall methodology to agile methodology and the DevOps just fits right in into that particular concept. We talked about application development. There is this whole notion of where do you store data? And there, uh, innovation is happening in terms of how do you manage data? How do you query data? So the whole concept of bringing in autonomous, of self-driving, self-repairing, and self-tuning. Uh, infrastructure for your data storage, for your data queries, for your data analysis, all this becomes a very, very key part. And I see that also happening as a trend because data is crucial and it needs to be stored, uh, needs to be retrieved in a very efficient way that is very, very focused on the, uh, on the way cloud works. I see a lot of focus on using emerging technologies. Now, what do I mean by emerging technologies? These are areas that are not necessarily new, but a whole lot of effort is being, being put on it uh, to, to get new, um, new force into it. And what I mean by that is something like AIML, which is one of the emerging technologies, has been in the labs for a long time. It's been there for a long time because we've not had enough data on which your machine learning algorithms would work um, or enough compute power. Now the cloud brings both of these together. You've got data that's been created over a period of time by the enterprises, which is already there, but you need 
compute power in short bursts for you to run machine learning algorithms over this particular data. And that's what cloud brings to you. And therefore, suddenly, you can do your big data analysis, your data science projects, much more efficiently than you ever did it. Blockchain is simply put a distributed ledger which is uh, stored with, within, with the participants of the, uh, the blockchain, the, the participants who are creating the blockchain. But more importantly, it is the basis of trust between these players who may not be trusting each other really but want to get a particular business case or business event to happen. Uh, and they want visibility to the various events that are happening around that business event. Uh, what that means is that suddenly you have this capability where um, you create a consortium that is towards a common goal um, and could be very different players. Uh, Cargo Smart, which is an Oracle customer, did exactly that. They went ahead and brought on board four other different uh, shipping companies who probably also compete with them and ports uh, which which are making an entire logistics uh, framework uh, whereby it's easy for them to move documentation related to shipping from one place to another uh, and everybody has visibility to that because of, of blockchain. So the trust here is in the network rather than in individuals or individual corporations, and that's important. We are also looking at merging blockchain and IoT to create more efficient applications for logistics use cases. When some particular product is built to the, the eventual destination of that particular product, how do you figure out if it has not been tampered? Uh, if it's not been replaced by something else, which is spurious. And therefore, this entire logistic chain being secured or at least being visible to various participants like the manufacturer, the logistics partner, the warehouse, the, the dealer distributor, and the retail customer or the end customer uh, of the product is very, very important. And that's what's being built using blockchain and IoT together. is the conversational AI. Um, you would know about Alexa, about Siri, Google Home. I do not need to, um, need to focus on that. But think about those applications being moved over to enterprise use cases. You, you would be using an HR system. Think about how difficult it is to you know, raise a claim uh, for an expense that you have done. Uh, think about the trip that you did last time and the business expenses that you need to claim. Now think about how easy it would be if there was a chat bot or a Facebook messenger um, or uh, an Alexa in front of you and you provide the inputs verbally or via keyboard as a conversation and that goes and sits into the HR system for it to manage your expenses further whatever approvals, etc. And think about also your manager approving it via Alexa rather than going, logging into browser, going to that particular page and then clicking, okay, this is approved. Think about if it was all done automatically by an AI ML engine that is sitting behind. And that's exactly what the next generation of applications that are being built.